work. <laughs> All right. Great. So everyone, welcome to Earth Science Week webinar, Innovating for Earth and People. Um, so Earth Science Week is actually coming up next week, um, but we're hoping that what you learn from this webinar, you can implement any time of the year to celebrate our planet and the innovative innovative ways that people are addressing challenges in their communities. So my name is Claire Radcliffe Adams. My pronouns are she, her. I am an education associate at the Space Science Institute, and I'm also the PI for the We Are Water project, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, and I'm so happy to be joined here today with Jan Heiderer, um, who is the producer of the Agents of Change video series, which we will be going over today. So I'll let Jan introduce herself. Thank you, Claire. And thanks very much to the StarNet uh, Network for inviting me today because I've learned a lot about your organization since being invited and I'm really pleased to be here with this particular audience. I'm the communications coordinator at the GLOBE program and I'll be telling you a little bit about GLOBE and a little bit, a little bit about a project that we did recently that I think might you might find useful in your own work as well. So um, uh, I think um, I can move to the next person. We're introducing. Great. Um, yeah, and I also want to give a shout out to Dylan Connolly, um, who is here doing chat support. Um, you might hear their voice as well um, as a co-host of the webinar, and also Beatrice Chavez, who's in the chat. Um, she is our uh, education specialist who does all of our Spanish translations for our activities, and will be doing chat support and dropping some helpful links throughout the webinar. So for today, um, we're going to start off with just a really quick icebreaker um, and then go into a We Are Water overview as well as an Earth Science Week overview. I'm assuming if you're here today, you already know about Earth Science Week or you want to learn more about how you can implement Earth Science programs into your library. Um, I'll turn it over to Jan after that to talk about the Agents of Change video series, as well as the GLOBE program, um, which produced these amazing videos that you can show to your patrons in your libraries, along with some um, activities and learning resources. I have one hands-on activity demonstration called Precipitation Towers, um, and it looks like we have folks from all over the country here today. So this is an activity that can be done um, anywhere, even around the whole world. Um, it's a really great place-based activity uh, where you examine how much water you're getting, how much precipitation you're getting in your area of the world. Um, and you can turn that into fun three-dimensional graphs with your families that come to your programs. And we'll end with a discussion and a Q&A. And thanks, Beatrice. She just dropped the link bank in the chat. So all of the different activities and videos and resources that we'll be covering today are linked in that link bank. Um, so feel, feel free to sit back and relax. Um, you can bookmark that link bank and go back to it later if you want to check out any of the videos we talk about or activities. Um, all of them are directly linked in, in that link bank. All right, so first off, just to warm up a little bit, um, since we are uh, coming to you from the We Are Water project, I would love if you could share in the chat a favorite memory you have about water. I think water is one of those things that connects all of us, all of the living organisms on our planet, no matter if you're in the arid southwest or in an area like New York that just got a ton of rain um, or any other place in the planet. So um, share a favorite memory you have about water. While you think about that and type your answers in the chat, I'll share mine. So I spent uh, a few months as an intern at Canyonlands National Park in Southern Utah, right out of college. And it's such an arid environment. You know, this is a desert environment. We get maybe down there, you know, less than nine inches of, wa of water precipitation per year. Um, but I was there during the fall, which they call it monsoon season, um, but that's where we get the most amount of our water down there. So you would just see these huge thunder clouds coming through, just massive amounts of water, but all collected in the sky as clouds. And I would see it rain, but it was so dry, the water often wouldn't even reach the ground, but you could smell it in the air. And it was just so moving. And that, that sense of smell, um, that seeing the water up in the sky, but being down on the parched earth, 
earth is just such a profound um, memory I have. And I, I just, I loved that time of year. It was really, really powerful for me. All right. So if anyone else wants to share their favorite memory about water in the chat, I'm still looking at the chat here. Or if Dylan or Jan, if you want to share um, a memory you have about water. Yeah, I have a fond memory of uh, when I was body surfing when I lived in Hawaii and uh, I uh, got mildly attacked by a sea turtle uh, who kept slapping me on the shoulder with their uh, flipper and was following me as I was trying to swim away. And I think about that every time I go in the water now. <laughs> Gosh, amazing. Well, the first thing that came to mind for me was hating swimming lessons as a kid and not particularly liking water, being in water. But it wasn't until I got to college and I worked on the summer in the summers on Martha's Vineyard and I got to swim in the ocean that I became a complete uh, an addict for the for the seaside to the sea and the and the beach. So yeah, I'm a big uh fan of water now. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm having that same uh, challenge with my son right now. He's two. Um, and we started swim lessons for him and he just screams the entire time. But I know it's really important for him to learn how to swim. So we go every Saturday morning. Um, and Norma shared in the chat, enjoying the sound of rain and running through it as a child. Yeah, absolutely. Chrissy says, one of my very first memories of a child was seeing Niagara Falls. I grew up in Florida, though, and we were on vacation to sail with my family. I didn't come to live here until I was an adult, but it kind of feels like it was meant to be. Yeah, I saw, I've only been to Niagara Falls one time, and I was a kid as well, and I just remember just the sound of, of the water falling down. It's really amazing. Great. Well, if you want to keep sharing your memories in the chat, we would love to hear them. Um, I love talking about how water connects us all and how different they can our, our memories are of them. And that brings us to talking a little bit about the We Are Water project. So this is an NSF funded project that started in 2020. Um, and it's all about connecting communities through our shared stories of water. Um, and this project's does focus specifically on the Four Corners region of the southwestern U.S. So that's where Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico all come together. Um, it's a really unique and special area, partially because it's so dry, but the entire landscape is shaped by water. This whole landscape used to be under an ocean a long time ago, you know, uh, I think hundreds of thousands of years ago. And so you can actually find fossils, you know, of sharks and other types of ocean animals embedded, you know, in the limestone rocks. Um, and it's still being weathered away, you know, every single day by the ice in the winter and then um, and, and the, the rivers that cut through the landscape. So um, we've been focusing on water in this desert um, area for the last almost four years now. So it's a collaboration between scientists, indigenous science educators, learning researchers, informal educators, and library staff. So these are some of our partners in the project um, that you can see here on the screen. Um, and so what are we doing with this project? Um, we are working with public and tribal libraries in the Four Corners region, serving indigenous, Latinx, and rural communities. Um, we're connecting communities through conversations and explorations about water through a multicultural traveling exhibit, um, which features languages um, in Navajo, Spanish, English, and Ute. Um, and our, just a couple of months ago, this exhibit traveled to the Zuni tribal archives. So part of the exhibit was also translated into Zuni language as well. So um, this has been a, a, a you know a, a big project in my heart for the last many many years, um, and as part of this project, we always celebrate Earth Science Week um, because a lot of the activities that are associated with the We Are Water project um, are great Earth Science activities. So Earth Science Week was started in 1998 by the American Geosciences Institute. This year, it's taking place from October 8th through the 14th. Um, and the reason why Earth Science Week began was to gain a better understanding and appreciation for Earth sciences, to encourage stewardship of the Earth. Um, and every year there's a different theme. So this year the theme is 
geoscience innovating for earth and people. So using what we know through earth science to make innovative solutions um, to the challenges that we face around the world um, you know, and, and identify opportunities for how we can use geoscience, um, to, yeah, for, for, for more opportunities. Um, so if you go to earthsciweek.org, you can learn more about Earth Science Week. Um, the week involves contests that you can um, be a part of. There are events. And if you're doing any type of earth science program next week, you can register your event on Earth Sci Week and be a part of the online community. There are tons of activities. So if you're looking for more earth science activities, go to earthsciweek.org and you can find all kinds of stuff um, for little kids all the way up through high school um, on this website. And there's so much more. Um, but we thought the 2023 theme fit in so well with the Globe Project Agents of Change video series, since those are videos featuring how people have been innovating, you know, even young kids um, through adult organizations. Um, these videos really highlight how we can use geoscience to be creative and to be great problem solvers. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jan to talk more about the GLOBE problem, or sorry, GLOBE program, not problem, um, and the Agents of Change video series. Thank you, Claire. So hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Heiderer. I am the communications coordinator at the GLOBE implementation office in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I am here to tell you just a little bit about the GLOBE program. Uh, and also then to dip into this new kind of exciting film series we've developed, which we think would be very appropriate for you to show in your libraries or any informal education after school programs or classrooms, whatever, during Earth Science Week. Um, so that picture, by the way, got a little stretched out in the formatting from uh, Google Slides to PowerPoint, I guess. But that is a one of our GLOBE events. And I believe it's us in the Czech Republic when the Globe Europe group um, comes together every year and rolls a big ball down the center of whatever town that they are having their event in and uh, brings the whole community get together. Globe is definitely an, an, um, a, an organization that brings people together. Next slide, please. And here are just some photos that you can roll your eyes over while I tell you a little bit about the Globe program, just the basics. Uh, GLOBE is an international science and education program. Uh, it provides students and the public, uh, citizen scientists, uh, worldwide with the opportunity to participate in data collection uh, and the scientific process. And in doing so, they are contributing to our understanding of the Earth system and the global environment. Um, what you see here are some slides from our communities around the world. We have uh, a vast, uh, we've been in, we've been, the GLOBE program has been going for since 1995. So 28 years. Um, we have, we are operating in more, in more than 125 countries, uh, over 40,000 schools, um, close to 50,000 teachers have been uh, trained in the GLOBE protocols, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, and then we've also developed a, an, a mobile app for the phone where anybody can go out uh, and collect environmental data using the phone. And that is freely downloadable from your app store. It's called the Globe Observer. And that's a pretty neat app for uh, teaching, uh, for getting anyone interested in collecting environmental data. Um, the data then goes into our database. We now have over 240 million data, data points in our database, which we encourage everyone to use. It's freely available to anyone for use in any kind of research. And um, uh, so let's see here. Um, uh, my screen just blipped over to another screen, but that's okay. Um, next slide, please. Um, so um, this is the slide in the spheres, I take it, because I'm so, suddenly my, my one of my windows is not available to me. Is it the slide on the spheres, Claire? 
Yeah, Earth as a yeah, system. Earth as a system, yeah. So we get students primarily and, and everyone out looking and measuring different aspects and components of the Earth system. And we, you know, go look, we have, we're focused on the spheres, atmosphere, petosphere, or soils, biosphere, hydrosphere. And we dis and we bring it all together to understand how Earth works as a system. And this is what's unique to me about the GOBE program, because it's not a compartmentalized view of little aspects of the Earth system, but it kind of brings it all together. Um, as I said, we're in, we're, we are active in over 125 countries. Now, as um, we have recently wanted to, to, to make some films about the GLOBE program, we have had, had, have had an array of films made by uh, different people in the organization and the community, but we sort of felt that there was really no set of videos that bring it all home, you know, really give you a sense of what the GLOBE program is all about. And it's a program that I think everyone should know about. I think it should be as known as the Peace Corps <laughs> because, you know, it has affected as many people, students around the world, in this country and abroad, and has really grown a very dedicated following of teachers, students, scientists, and um, just friends of the organization who see its value and want to see it um, known and used. So uh, so as communications coordinator, I was wanting to do some of these videos and we thought, well, how do we even approach this? You know, because there is so, this is such a big story. There are so many people around the world doing things. How do we even begin? So first thing we did was, I think you can go to the next slide. Claire? Oh yeah. There is the participating the stats I already told, told you about. Sorry, I'm back on. By the way, I have my window up, so I, I already gave you that information, but you can refer to it if you have to go back and look at this again. Next slide, please. Okay, here comes the news about the bill, the film series, Agents of Change video series is a series of six films, uh. And you'll see there the trailer at the top. It's a two and a half minute film to give you a taste of it, of all of them. But the Agents of Change film series came about when we decided to tackle this story of telling about the impact of GLOBE in the world of Earth science. Uh, uh, how, how, do, how are we going to go about wrapping our head around um, telling this story? So first thing we decided to do was to break it up, break this into six stories, six because we have six regions around the world. You'll see on that previous map, you don't need to go back Claire, but uh, we have the, the world broken into six geographic reg re regions and we have regional offices there. The point is that those offices then build their own local networks and uh, country, country have their own uh, representatives in, in each of their countries. Country We call them country coordinators and they have uh, uh, a, uh, they have um, you know, their network. So we worked with each network, uh, each regional office to find a good story. And then we also then wanted to have an array of stories, you know, not have everybody be talking about their water studies or their soil studies or whatever, um, but we wanted to select one. So this, this, this was a, quite a strategic uh, you know, undertaking to make sure that we were telling the whole story of GLOBE. And you'll never really tell the whole story, but this I think is a good start. So um, I'll go through in a minute, uh, uh, episode by episode, but next slide, please. Oh yeah, um, this is going to be in the notes at the end for your take home notes. Um, the playlist is down there at the bottom. Uh, which will take you to the the playlist of all six films and the trailer. And above that, you'll see the guide to viewing. We've developed a, a training uh, a, a training exercise for people like you who want to show this video these videos and want and so we've given you guiding questions to ask the audience. Uh, so that you'll find in the guide to viewing. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is one of my favorite pictures. It was of a recent, gathering we had we have we have an annual meeting every year this one was in detroit a couple of years ago uh and it just shows you our community on the last night we have everybody come out in national costumes it's quite a wonderful group of 
of, of people. It really is. Um, so uh, with that, I think maybe we want to jump into seeing one of the films. This film we selected was the third film we made uh, in North America. We filmed, um, as I said, throughout the world. But this one we selected because it talks about um, students on uh, in the uh, Apache in in Indian Reservation in Nevada. So um, we'll show the film now. I know quite a few people on my reservation that have asthma. Okay, that's east. That's north. The air was a huge problem. The dust, the smoke. We are experiencing weather conditions the likes of which we've never experienced in our lifetime. Crews working around the clock to get a handle on some of the largest fires in state history. The fires also creating thick smoke, so hazardous, it's like smoking 400 cigarettes a day. Okay, so that's how you send your pictures to Globe Observer. So are we looking at the air coming from up here into the sensor, or do we need it to be taller where we can get more air from the surrounding? That's the thing that you are just going to have to figure out. Do we want it to be this? This tall? project that we're working on is working oh, with oh, air sensors. We plant them yeah. wherever, yeah. and we figure out if the air is good enough for people with breathing problems. The air will flow into here. Here are the sensors. I feel like this could help my reservation. People with respiratory breathing problems, asthma, and of course my elders. So once you put this in the ground, my question is, would anybody have the capability of knowing what the air quality is in Mescalero? Yes, they could. This little box is what shallow and cadence will be using the 3D part that's being printed. This box will mount on to it and be able to set on the tabletop, and they should be able to see all the readings on the air quality sensor. My idea of a GLOW teacher is a teacher that, number one, is concerned about the environment. Number two, concerned enough to allow the students to dabble into uh, different projects and see if it's something they can connect with. Growing up, I hated school. You would have never believed that I would turn into an educator. Right, right there. My favorite part about the project is coding. Actually, here in the school, they're learning how to code in the Mescalero Apache language, and I find that pretty cool. It's the color, or yeah, the color of one. We don't want our language to die out like other reservations. I know a lot of reservations don't know their language because some elders are gone that knew a lot about their language, and then the kids don't like know how to learn it. So I feel like it's really important to keep our language alive. All right, we're here. Thank you, V. I like to have fun with my students. Now I want you just to hit this. Not my hand. <laughs> I don't have any qualms in telling my students how I grew up because some of them are facing what I faced when I was in high school. This is our map. And if you look at that great dart there, that's Mescla Apache School. And there's our reading. And it takes data every 10 minutes. Okay, every 10 minutes, it's going to report some kind of data. 
Because I want these kids to realize there's more to life than just living on the reservation. Somebody had to push me outside of my box, and that's what I do. I draw a box on the board, and I put dots inside the box, a whole bunch of dots, and maybe one or two dots outside. I said, which one of these are you? Are you inside the box or are you outside the box? The person outside the box got more opportunity because he or she is not confined to the inside of that box. I see myself going to college for um, engineering. I do want to go out. I do want to leave my reservation, learn new things, travel. I want to be recognized on my reservation and around the world. That's my goal is to like succeed in front of people who thought I couldn't do it. And I tell these kids all the time, I say, you know what? You may not see it, but I do. I see what you are capable of doing, and I'm not going to push you where I know you can't go. But if I'm pushing you, then I'm telling you, you can do this. Thank you, Claire. So that film was six minutes long. Uh, and the thing I should tell you is that all of these films in the series are between six and eight minutes long. So they're really nice little shorts that you can show in your, <laughs> thanks for the thumbs up, uh, that you can show in your, um, wherever you're working. Uh, and as I said, we had developed a, a viewer's guides with guiding questions that can help you start a conversation about them. We selected the, this one because it's focused in the, you know, in the fork in an area near if the four corners. And uh, I know that your We Are Water project is um, uh, focused in that area. And we'll be showing a second film a little later on this morning uh, focused on water itself. So thank you, Claire. Great, thank you so much. Um, yeah, and another thing I love about that film in particular is, you know, coming from the West and, you know, in the Four Corners region and, you know, just the West, Intermountain West, I grew up in Utah. Now I live in Colorado. I lived in Wyoming for a long time. You know, wildfires and air quality have been something I have dealt with my entire life. Um, and I think it, it goes hand in hand with the water scarcity and the droughts that we have out here. But now we're seeing across the country um, and across the world, um, I, I see there's someone from New York, you know, in the in the chat um, and Ohio, you know, or, you know, I think all of us have been experiencing air quality issues due to wildfire smoke. Um, that's not just where we might traditionally think of it happening, but it's it's now become you know a global issue, and and so to hear stories of of communities where they are learning more about it and taking steps and protecting you know the the people who are um, at risk uh, for having lung issues to the to the fire can really help guide communities that are now experiencing it for the first time. Um, but I'm now going to talk about an activity that we have on the We Are Water activity collection, which is in the link bank that Beatrice just put in the chat again. Um, this is called Precipitation Towers. So again, this is an activity that can be done no matter where you are, the four corners or globally, um, and you can customize it to be really specific to where you are live. Um, but essentially, participants create 3D graphs using some sort of stackable blocks. You can use Legos. You can use these in this image here are actually, I believe, printed. Um, you, there's a file where you can 3D print cubes to stack. Um, and I'll show you pictures later of gigantic Le Legos that I used for mine. But essentially, participants are creating 3D graphs to compare precipitation levels from different locations. Um, it's meant for elementary students and tweens, uh, but I'll tell you, I did this last night with my two-year-old who's just learning how to count right now, and it was so much fun. Um, so it really can be a uh, multi-generational activity if you have family members coming into your programs. Um, 
the time to complete, it can be anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how in-depth you want to get in comparing the data sets with different places around the country and around the world. Um, so in this activity, it, the files include precipitation data from across the U.S. that are already kind of put together for you. Um, here's an example of one from Vail, Colorado. This is included in the activity as is. Um, it also includes precipitation data from around the globe. Um, so you can compare what's happening in your spot in the U.S. with other countries around the world. There's also a data collection sheet um, and instructions for how to create your own data set. Um, you know, using a NASA database of information. And I'm also putting together um, an implementation guide to accompany this with um, how to collect data from Sphere uh, from the Oregon State University, which in my opinion is a lot more user-friendly. So we're putting that together with a step-by-step -step guide um, for creating your own specific data set based on your zip code. Um, and then it also comes with a 3D printer file to create bases for the precipitation towers. If you have a makerspace with a 3D printer um, and you have kids that are really excited about using that, um, you can create, you can make this basically as simple or as complex as you would like. There's a lot of wiggle room here to, to cater this to what you want to do with your audience. Um, so this is what I did with my son last night. I took the precipitation data from San Francisco because um, he is, like I said, he just turned two. He loves these blocks. These are bigger blocks. You know, I don't want him choking on little tiny Legos. So we have these giant Lego blocks that's just in my house. So I was able to pull those out. Um, and he can count up to five really well right now. <laughs> After that, it gets a little more tricky. So um so we chose the San Francisco data collection set. Um, and you can see these are um, the numbers are the average monthly precipitation converted to inches every single month, and they're rounded to whole numbers. So for your younger kids, you know, if you're doing counting or some type of STEM project with little kids and you want to work on their counting, you know, pull out the blocks, pull out these data collection sets, um, and you can make some really fun three-dimensional graphs. Um, and what I think is really great about this, especially if you want to get um, deeper into what's happening in with weather patterns, um, you can see, you know, there are four whole months in San Francisco um, that got zero inches, you know, of precipitation. So there's this little, this, this, there's this chunk taken out of it. Um, so I think having these three-dimensional graphs that kids can really put their hands on and see um, helps them understand, you know, what is happening, why it gets so dry in some part times of the year um, and not in others. And we went ahead and we compared it to Washington, D.C. We're going there in a couple of weeks to visit some family. So I said, you know what, like, let's let's compare, you know, what we're going to see out in Washington, D.C. We're we, let's see what the precipitation is out there. So you can see it's a lot more steady, you know, there is rain and precipitation throughout the whole year. And, um, you know, in June and September, they get some of the most precipitation versus if you look in on the West Coast, that's when the West Coast gets the least amount of precipitation. So, you know, I can start having these conversations with my son who's only two about, you know, looking at the landscape where we are out in the West, you know, what might we see that's different when we go to Washington, D.C.? Maybe we can make some predictions. Maybe there's more plants. Maybe there's more rivers. Maybe there's more lakes um, and things like that. So it's a fun way to, to start to talk about the just the landscape and how things are different throughout our country. And then again, throughout the world, if you would like to, to, to expand this out like beyond your own place. Um, so these are just two side by side. Then my son and I got to really look at them, um, talk about the differences and, you know, work on our counting skills. So while this activity, it is, you know, meant for older kids, you can adapt this for your younger guys if you're doing pre-K programs in your libraries. But it's a lot of fun. It's really simple. Um, and it's a way to really start using data and start to make some observations, make some predictions um, and start getting that scientific process going with your the families at your library.
All right, so we are gonna watch another episode. This is episode four, Near East and North Africa and Omen. Um, and Jan, would you like to say a little bit about this film before we press play? Sure. Um, this film, uh, again, it's a short one, about six or seven minutes long. Uh, we looked at all of our countries in the Middle East and and uh, landed on this particular story. Uh, we wanted to go. We wanted to explore a little bit about about Glow Girls in Science and the kind of opportunities that Girl uh, Glow presents for girls. Um, these girls in the vi video, these friends, are all fifteen years old, um, and they are involved in a water project in their community. So the thing about Globe is that you know they students learn protocols, um, and but um, they that is how to. Uh, well, I'll talk about it in a bit because we have a section on that. But um, they they take what they learn through the GLOBE program and, and apply it to their local communities. And that is one of the great things about the program. It's just not learning little exercises. It's really taking the knowledge and using it to address a, an issue in the local community. So this is what this that's what this film is about. يعني الماء نحن يعني دائما نصفه انه شريان الحياه اذا الماء متوفر ونقي ويعني خالي من المشكلات كل ما كانت الحياه افضل زين طبعا نحن في البدايه ما كنا نعرف كيف يتكون الوادي ولا من هين يجي اول شيء ان الامطار مثلا الامطار يروحون عند الجبال ينزل ينزل على حياته يتراكم يعني ينزل على كيت الفرج نفس القناة قناة حجارية فتمر بالمزارع الحين وأحيانا في البيوت وشي علاقة ثمانية بالمزارع طبعا تربطهم من زمان كبير يعني أول شيء لأن إحنا في منطقة داخلية فيعني ما يقدر مثلا يستفيدوا من البحر يجيبوا أسماك أو شيء كذا فكان المزارع أكثر شيء اللي يستفيدهم واحسن يكون ظهرش على الشمس عشان تشوفي زين ايوه كذا جلوب مع البروتوكولات الموجوده في برنامج جلوب لكن بمرور الوقت الطالب جالس يتابع اي تغير يحدث في البيئه لاحظ هذا التغير بيبدي هذا الطالب يتساءل مع نفسه يتس... لان كنا رايحين على الوادي ركزنا على المياه اكثر اكثر شيء فكنا نقيس ثلاث قوانم أول شيء صفاء المياه والموصلية والحموضة أيضا ثمانية فاصل ثلاثين هذا الـ إيش علاقة الماء توفر الماء بصناعة الغذاء وتوفره؟ آه طبعاً علاقة كبيرة يعني بدون ماء ماشي حياة أساسي طبعا نحن هنا في الداخلية نواجه بعض الأحيان قلة في المياه مع أنه هناك يكون مزارع يعني يعني من كمية المزارع كبيرة لكن كثير من المزارعين في الباطنة يعانيوا من مشكلة التملح في التربة آخر شيء استقرينا على الفكرة هذه لأنه كان مشكلة مجتمعية كبيرة واحد واحد اثنين ثلاثة 
نوظف فيها النبات هذا نبات احنا نسميه باللغه العاميه الروغ اللي هو الكومن ريدز بالانجلش سبق واستخدمنا هذا النبات في مشروع سابق في التسميد وكان يلا تاثير ايجابي وبالتالي فكرنا ان نحن نستخلص منه محلول ونوظف هذا المحلول كماده مغذيه في نظام الزراعه المائيه ونحن ترانا مقارنين لمدة أسبوعين شايفين تأثير المحاليل المغذية العادية ولمدة أسبوعين نتابع أيضا تأثير المحلول المبتكر من نبات الروغ وبالفعل طبقنا الفكرة وكان لمدة شهر نحن نراقب نمو النبتة المستخدمة في التجربة هذه حصلنا انه يعني المغذي النباتات بالمغذي الصناعي كان له نتائج اسوء فكان المحلول له نتائج احسن حتى كان يعني ممتده قصيره ان شاء الله وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته كيف الدراسة؟ زين وكيف المشروع؟ الحمد لله عن مو درست اليوم؟ اليوم احنا الوالد حول برنامج جلوب واهدافه في ان اشرب بعض هذه الاهداف لابنتي طبعا أكسبن هذا البرامج الكثير أو هذا البرنامج الكثير من المهارات المهمة التحليل والمقارنة والملاحظة مو السبب الأساسي هل 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 قدور أم هو يكن أكثر شيء أكثر شيء قدور نحن لما كنا نسوي المحلول سوينا القدور ومع استخدام السام يعني عم نتكلم عن التغير المناخي هي قضية عالمية عندما نتكلم عن التصحر هي قضية عالمية ولذلك هذه القضية لا يبحثها فئة معينة من الباحثين دون آخر فقضية أن أصبحت عندنا فعلا فئة من الطالبات المبدعات في هذا المجال ويعتبر مصدر فخر لنا صغار ترى دائما نغسل وجهنا وإذنا من هاي أو أو يقدر يصحي أو يقدر يصحي أمضي عن طيح أريد يكون لي قيمة قيمة يعني كيف حميت بيئتي كيف حميت مجتمعي كله لازم إن نحن حتى لو ما وجدنا الحلول على الأقل نعطي أفكار لأني أنا أحب أشتغل بدل ما أجلس وأشوف فهذا يعني يخليني العمل يخليني استوعب اكثر من نظري. واحنا يعني في هذا العصر يعني واجد مشاكل بيئيه نواجهها وكوارث بيئيه فيعني في انه كفرد واحد على الاقل مثلا يعطي فكره عشان يساعد البيئه لو بشيء بسيط وينشر التوعيه هذا شيء كبير بالنسبه لنا احنا كطلاب. Thank you for showing that film, Claire and um, Dylan. I, I get almost choked up when I see that film because uh, those girls were just amazing. They're so, so they were so gracious and focused and and uh, they had so, such maturity for their age. Um, you know, I that's a beautiful thing about the GLOBE program. It really seems to bring about the out the best in kids. You know, they they find something in there in the vast array of of offerings we 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 put out there. 
that connects that the you know kids in Alaska they have certain interests they they're drawn to certain uh, areas of the program uh kids along the water you know uh in water zones in the uh in urban areas urban heat islands um are in it, are an interest to them there is something for everybody in the globe program so i would encourage you to go to globe.gov all these i think this will be in in the notes at the end www.globe.gov that is our website where you will learn more about the globe program also i believe my own personal email uh email is in there i'd be pleased to uh to join you online for a showing if you want to show these videos at a library or wherever you are uh probably not during earth science week i'm going to be out of the country but any other time that you find uh, you know, an opportunity to show these films, either an individual film or the series of films, uh, I'd be happy, more than happy to come and to be, uh, you know, to introduce them. Awesome, thank you so much, Jan. Yeah, these are such beautiful videos and tell such important stories. Um, so yeah, you guys should definitely take Jan up on her offer um, to be there to help, you know, virtually she could, pro she could be there to, to introduce the films. Um, and we don't have time to show the rest of the films, but we'll just give you a brief overview of um, what else is in this series. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, Jan, if you want to talk about yeah. them. Let's just flip through these pretty quickly. This is the first film we made in Kenya. Uh, these are kids. This, the focus here is on the digital divide. The kids who really didn't have anything much, and they, but they were used incredibly creative in, in inventing their own kind of weather instruments out of, you know, debris and you know found objects i guess you could say and um and then so they were so focused on this that the globe program we decided to hook them up with another organization that's here at ucar which is our where we sit uh, at in boulder under the university corporation for atmospheric research uh we uh they have we're, they had a weather a 3d weather printing 3D weather station printing project going in Kenya. So we hooked them up with the Globe School and we were able to bring a very cool 3D printed weather station to this village. And that's the story there. Yes, this one you will also like. This is a nine-year-old, focuses on a nine-year-old boy who became obsessed with mosquitoes and mosquito uh, uh, illness prevention. Uh, he's, it was uh, the Zika, pro, uh, you probably all remember the Zika virus being such a threat. We were worried the mosquitoes were going to come up to America. Um, you know, th there was a, a real push on by the GLOBE program to get education down into Latin America and other parts of the world where uh, there are other mosquito-borne diseases, but there was a specific Zika project going on down in Brazil. And this little boy really became focused and obsessed with mosquitoes and how to how to uh, you know bring awareness to his community that's a lovely little film oh this one is good for you for for water week um this was a, a water expedition in Kathmandu oh sorry Pokhara which is the next little hopping flight out from Kathmandu in Bhutan uh whenever a regional office sets up uh, uh, an event, boom, you know, all <laughs> people from neighboring countries want to come and they do if they can afford it or if they can find a way to get there. So there was a water project happening that studied the water coming down from the Himalayas down to the plains. And so that we immediately, it was immediately filled up with about, I don't know, 25 or so st students and their teachers from Nepal, India, Bhutan, Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, and the U.S. And that's a quite a sweet little film as well. This one is good because it teaches you about the the start of the grow pro, well, blah, the globe program. Uh, it 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 shows you a little bit of the history because Croatia one was, was one of the very first countries to get involved in globe in 1995. It was after the Serbo-Croatian War. There had been a lot of disruption to students' education and 
at the time we were making this film and the, and COVID was raging, I, I sort of saw the parallels because the teacher there said, you know, the students were inside a lot because of the war, they couldn't go out. And she wanted to bring this program to Croatia because uh, similar to the COVID situation here, she wanted kids to get back outside, get their hands in the earth and be outdoors again. And so that is this story from Croatia. It's also one of my faves. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I guess those are the six. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks, Jan. And before I move on, just the last part of the webinar, um, just want to open up. If anyone has any questions, um, you can put your question in the chat. Um, yeah, and thank you so much, Jan, for giving us the run through of this video series. Um, and I look forward to checking all of them out um, and sharing them with more of our project partners. One thing I forgot to mention, I need to mention our sponsors. <laughs> uh, Globe is sponsored by NASA. And we also have support from the National Science Foundation, from NOAA, and from the United States Department of State. Um, and we're located here and implemented here in Boulder at the at UCAR, the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. And thank you for watching. Thank you. Any questions? There was one question in the chat earlier, um, someone looking for the link um, to the activities and videos. So we compiled all the links for all the videos, the activity, um, and put it into one blog post. So if you click on what Beatrice is calling the link bank in the chat, that will take you to all of the links. You can um, head straight there. Um, and if you're looking for more hands-on activities to maybe go with the video, if you, if you wanna, um, screen one of these videos in a program and you want an activity to go with it, I encourage you to check out the STEM Activity Clearinghouse that's curated by Starnet. Um, that's at www.clearinghouse.starnetlibraries.org. Um, and there are over 500 hands-on STEM activities for ages pre-K through adults programming. Um, and they are not only space science activities, but a ton of earth science activities there as well. Um, and you can find our We Are Water activity collection um, as one of the eight featured collections when you go to the homepage of our STEM activity clearinghouse. We do have another free webinar coming up this month um, on October 17th at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. This one's all about water stories. It fits in really well with this, um, but this one's more of a workshop of how you can create your own water stories. Um, we'll be joined by um, our partners at CU Boulder, and they're going to be sharing photo tips, how to create compelling visuals and storytelling techniques. Um, you can register at starnetlibraries.org slash development slash webinars. We hope to see you at our next webinar. All right. And Dylan just put that uh, link to register for that webinar in the chat. So if you want to sign up for our upcoming webinar, we'd love to see you there. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. I'll stick around for a couple more minutes if any questions come up. But huge thank you to Jan for joining us today and sharing these amazing resources from Globe. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. All right, we have a question about the link. So Summer says, I'm not seeing the links that you're referencing. Can you send me a follow-up email with the links? Absolutely, Summer. Um, I'll I'll send you the, I'll just email you. I have your email address. So um, look for an email from Claire Ratcliffe at the Space Science Institute. And if anyone has questions, I will, and wants to- You know what, that was my bad. I realized I hadn't switched over my chat from hosts and panelists to everyone. So I just sent that out there to everyone. I'm so sorry. Uh, awesome. <laughs> that should be in the chat for you now, Summer. Uh, sorry about that. All right, Summer. Yeah, so there, there is the chat. Yeah, sorry. The default chat goes to just the host and panelists. So, okay, great. Summer has it. Awesome. Well, I did put my email in the chat. If anyone does have questions or wants more, more resources for doing earth science stuff, reach out to me. This is, uh, this is what I love to do. So, all right, with that, I'm going to end the webinar. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you.
Thank you.